In Canada and around the world, Kobuka 20 reminds us of the great human tragedy that befell the people of Rwanda. 800,000 children, women and men, cut down in a senseless manner. 20 years later, and still it hurts as yesterday. But we thank God for the spirit of forgiveness and reconciliation that resides in Rwanda. We grieve for the lives of those lost. We grieve for those who survive such a massacre over 100 days. Today, we once again stand with the people of Rwanda to commemorate the Rwandan genocide. We honor those promising lives lost and convey our solidarity with the survivors. The theme for this year's genocide commemoration is remember, unite, renew. Allow me to explain a bit more what these three powerful words reflect as we embark on this journey of commemoration. Remember, we remember to honor the memory of those who lost their lives. We also remember to show support and solidarity to those who survived the shameful tragedy, lost their family and friends, and are still struggling to come in terms with the genocide. This is a period of profound reflection and mourning for survivors and their families. I would like to use this platform to call on those present here and the global community to reflect on the suffering, trauma, and hardship the survivors of the 1994 genocide against Tutsi have endured and continue to face. The scars of the genocide are still fresh. 20 years may seem long for some people, but it's not a long time, especially for survivors. We remember without bitterness or the spirit of revenge, pity or hopelessness, but with dignity, resilience, and a determination to move on. This is the only way to ensure that such a tragedy never happens again. Going by the word of His Excellency President Paul Kagame, we cannot turn the clock back, nor can we undo the harm caused, but we have the power to determine the future and to ensure that what happened never happens again. Jinduru, Vasakuza Chane, Bavugakova Mongvum, Boyani, which of Avogaga, Kovajan in a Kumicha Quarinzi. We will call it with Korway with Korea, Hangaha, to Kahabudira, to Kahichira, about who we shoot it to us and Jiraga, to Kavicharinzira Karinga and Hatch of Kwafaga. We looked around us and smelled and saw we realized that we were in the midst of a genocide. The genocide in Rwanda in 1994 was a planned and political campaign. It came from a racist ideology called Hutu power. It started in 1994, what happened in 1959, the 1960s, the 1970s.
I think we have two positive responses. First, we can show respect to the survivors and the victims. We can take efforts to make sure that they are not forgotten, that they're not left unsupported. We can acknowledge their deep suffering. We can affirm, especially for the victims that are gone, that their lives meant something. And even though they're gone, we can clothe their memories and the lives they lived with dignity by remembering them. <laughs> I would like to address a few words to my fellow survivors here in the room. 20 years in a natural course of life seem to be a long time. Life in its natural course is full of excitement. But 20 years of pain, 20 years of sufferings, 20 years of bad memories, 20 years of nightmares, 20 years of loneliness, they are significant. And why? Because everything appeared to be the same when you live, when you're so embedded in, in a deep pain, day and night, doesn't mean much. Months and years are all the same. In fact, time can only be meaningful when you have something excitement to look forward to. Our wounds will never heal. Our memories will never go away. Our loved ones will never be forgotten. We come together on the eve of the 20th anniversary of the unspeakable genocide in Rwanda. Unspeakable because this genocide was preventable. Where one million Tutsis were murdered in less than 100 days. Aftermath of the 65th anniversary of the Genocide Convention, the international community must bear in mind, as the jurisprudence has reminded us again and again, and as the Supreme Court of Canada said in the Mugasera case, that incitement to genocide is a crime in and of itself, whether or not it is followed, as it was in this case, by acts of genocide. The very incitement to genocide constitutes the crime itself. And, and so taking action to prevent it, as the Genocide Convention compels us to do, is not a policy option. It is an international legal obligation of the first order. And decision makers, whether they be at the UN or heads of government, or whoever, ignore it at their peril and at the peril of the victims. <laughs> Vingt ans déjà, et pourtant c'est comme si c'était hier. Tellement le souvenir est toujours vivant dans nos cœurs, dans nos esprits et dans nos pensées de tous les jours. Ce génocide a changé notre existence. Une partie de nous-mêmes s'est envolée comme de la fumée il y a vingt ans. 
En 1994, cette année, année zéro pour nous, puisque à partir de là, on devait recommencer la vie à zéro. Comme si tout ce qui s'était passé avant n'a jamais existé. Nous n'oublions jamais que nous avions des familles et que maintenant nous sommes seuls. Nous n'oublions jamais que les nôtres n'ont pas été engloutis par un tsunami ou une autre catastrophe naturelle mais qui ont été exterminés par la main de ces criminels qui avaient décrété que nous n'avions plus le droit de vivre sous cette terre. Honorable Senators, Member of the Parliament, Madame Umutoni, Chargé d'Affaires for the Rwanda High Commission to Canada, Excellencies, Member of the Diplomatic Corps, Representative of all party parliamentary group for the prevention of genocide and other crimes against humanity, Ladies and Gentlemen, Mesdames et Messieurs, Dear Friends, Chers Amis, on behalf of the Government of Canada and Minister Jason Baer, it is a privilege for me to stand here today to mark the launch in Canada of the Qui Buka 20 and to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the 1994 genocide in Rwanda. Cette journée représente une occasion pour les Canadiens et la communauté internationale tout entière de réfléchir sur les leçons apprises depuis le génocide en 1994. It also allowed us who will not be able to attend the April 7 commemoration ceremony in Kigali, the opportunity to pay our respect to all the Rwandans who fell victims to these crimes so that we can honor the memory and support those who have survived and have the last 20 years busiest themselves to rebuild their lives, their communities, and their countries. Commemorating this tragedy remain highly significant year after year. This day provides the opportunity for Canadians and the entire international community to reflect upon the lesson learned since the genocide. Canada wishes to acknowledge the great deal of work and effort that Rwanda made to rebuild the country and find a new place in the world. Rwanda is currently a member of the United Nations Security Council. Rwandan soldiers participate in the African Union and the United Nations missions around the world, in South Sudan, in Haiti, Somalia, and most recently, in the troubled Central Afri African Republic. This is a great potential for Rwanda to provide leadership on many issues and to advance peace and security regionally and globally. Over the past 20 years, Rwanda has taken major steps towards reconciliations and reconstruction. We applaud the leadership shown by the Rwandan government since 1994 and against the gains it has made. Mrs. Shakila Omutoni, Chargé d'Affaires at the, high, at the Rwandan High Commission to Canada. Uh, honorable uh, members of the Senate, members of the Parliament, and Your Excellencies, members of the all-party uh, parliamentary group for the prevention of genocide and against uh, all crimes of uh, and all crimes against humanity excellencies members of the canadian museum for human rights honorables friends of rwanda ladies and gentlemen fellow rwandans thank you very much 
for your presence. Thank you very much for standing with us on this day of Kwibuka 20. We thank you, Honorable Kilgore, for standing with us again for the 20th year. We appreciate it. <laughs>